Hi, in this video, I will continue the remaining topics of number system. In my previous video, I have explained what a rational and irrational number is and how do we represent them on number line. So in this video, we will cover other topics of grade 9th chapter 1. So operations on real numbers. Operations like how do we add, subtract, multiply, divide a rational and a irrational number. So let's take 6 plus root 3. So 6 plus root 3 I cannot further add because both are different. You can add and subtract only if your roots are same. Now for example I have 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2. So my root values are same. If my root values are same I can add or subtract whatever sign it has. Now 2 plus 3 is 5 and root will be written as it is. Similarly, if I have 6 root 5 minus 3 root 3, let's say, I cannot do 6 minus 3 because my roots are different. So you can subtract only if your roots are same. So for instance, I have 5 here. So now since my roots are same, I can do 6 minus 3, which is 3 root 5. So addition and subtraction is possible only if your root values are same else you cannot. Now coming to multiplication, multiplication um, let's say we have 3 root 2 into 4 root um, 2. So you can multiply num whole numbers separately and root values separately. So first let me multiply whole numbers. 4 into 3 is 12 and root 2 into root 2. Now root 2 into root 2 is root 4 which is 2 or you can always write when you're multiplying two same roots it is always the number without the root now suppose root 5 into root 5 is 5 root 6 into root 6 is 6 similarly root 2 into root 2 is 2 so 12 into 2 will give me 24 or if I have 3 root 2 into 4 root 3. So I will multiply my whole numbers normally. 3 into 4 is 12. And my roots together. Under root I will multiply 2 into 3 which will give me 6. So this is my final answer. So while multiplying whole numbers together and roots together. Now same goes with division. Suppose I have 6 root 3 divided by 7 root 3. So in this case, I can cancel root 3 root 3 and my answer ends up 6 by 7. Easy. Now let us take 6 by 12 and here we have root 3 and here we have root 3. So these roots are different. I cannot do anything. It will remain as it is. I can only reduce this one. 6 1, 6 2's. So 1 by 2 and root 2 by root 3. I cannot further 2. Now let us take another example. Let's see if I have root 15 by root 3. Now root 15 by root 3, I can together take them as 15 by 3 under root together because both of them has a root. So I can now reduce 3 1s, 3 5s are 15. So we end up having root 5 as the answer. So roots can be taken together in case of multiplication and division. Now let us see some identities that we have in this chapter. Root AB is root A into root B. So for example here you can take root 3 into 2 is basically root 3 into root 2 individually or we can club them and write. Next is root a plus root b into root a minus root b. So this is same as a plus b into a minus b which is a square minus b square. That way the roots got cancelled. Same the third one, fourth one we have already seen in the example. Fifth one when you multiply two uh, you know binomials how do we do? Root a multiplied by this bracket and root b multiplied by this bracket. And next we have a plus b whole square. a square plus b square plus 2ab. So these all identities we have already seen earlier. Now two interesting points we have. A rational number 
and an irrational number when you operate between them be it positive negative multiplication or division you always end up having an irrational number for example for example 6 and root 2 this is my rational number this is my irrational number if i add irrational subtract i end up having irrational multiplication will also give me 6 root 2 division will give me 6 by root 2 so every time you will end up having an irrational number only now second case irrational number and irrational number sometimes give you irrational or it can be rational also now let us take two irrational numbers. Let us take root 2 and root 2. So root 2 and root 2, when I multiply, we saw we had 2. So two irrational number can also give us a rational number. Or let me take root 3 and root 2. If I want to add them, multiply them, whatever, I end up having the same answer and irrational number. You cannot add them because the roots are different. You When you multiply also, you end up having a irrational number root 6. So when an irrational number and irrational number combine and form some operation, you might have a rational number or an irrational number number okay next very important is rationalizing the denominator what is rationalization now let us take a denominator 1 by root 3 as we know the root 3 is irrational so we rationalize the denominator only when we have the irrational number in the denominator so if we want to make it into a rational number we rationalize so how do we do that? When you have single numbers, we will multiply with that irrational number to both numerator and denominator, which means root 3 is multiplied to both. So we end up having th root 3 by root 3 into root 3 is 3 and we get a rational number. So we rationalize the denominator to make it into a rational number. How? By multiplying the irrational to both numerator and denominator. For example, we have two numbers. Let's say 5 plus root 3. So 5 plus root 3, when we have two numbers, in order to make it a rational denominator, the rationalizing factor is 5 minus root 3 that needs to be multiplied to both numerator and denominator. This is known as rationalizing factor, Rf. Similarly, here root 3 was rationalizing factor. So when you have plus in between, change it to minus to get a rationalizing factor. And if you have minus, change it to plus to get a rationalizing factor. So when I solve this, 5 minus root 3 into 1 is 5 minus root 3. And the denominator will always be in the form of a plus b into a minus b, which is a square minus b square. So we get 5 minus root 3 by 5 square is 25 minus square and root gets cancelled 3. So 5 minus root 3 by 22. So we end up having a rational denominator. So this is rationalizing the denominator so that we turn the denominator to a rational number. So for that, we need to multiply the rationalizing factor to both numerator and denominator. Now, last concept is laws of exponent, which we have been learning. So these laws are applicable only if your bases are same. First one, product law a power m into a power m since my bases are same a a since it is multiplication we add the powers next a power m divided by a power n when in case of division we subtract the powers now a power m whole power n when we have multiple powers 
you have bracket in between. We multiply all the powers. A power M N M into N. Now A power M B power M. You can since the powers are same, I can club my bases. For example, I have two cube into four cube. I can write two into four together. Two into four whole cube. So it will become eight cube. Last anything to the power zero is one. So this was about the first chapter. I've covered all the subtopics in the first chapter. In my next video, I'll come up with the most important questions that covers all the full chapter. And I hope you have understood the video. Thank you.